Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and we're going to be taking up for a number of days in context and in verse-by-verse teaching, Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25, talk about the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and also his millennial reign on this earth and the time of the tribulation. You're going to have some tremendous insight. We're starting today from Daniel chapter 9, Daniel's 70 weeks. Let's go together to the Word of God. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. It's great to have you here today. I'm going to be teaching probably for the next six, seven, uh, I'm not even going to put a number on it, I don't know how long it's going to be, till it's over. I'm going to teach on Matthew chapter 24 and 25 and talk about their appliance to us today. And uh, I've only taught on these particular verses when I teach the entire end time series, which I haven't even done that on television. So we're going to be taking up this segment. And uh, it's so important to uh, go back and do the study of how this all came about. Because during uh, Matthew 24, Jesus will revert back to and talk about Daniel's 70th week. And so we have to we have to open with this to let you know. And if you've heard this before, well, hang in there. You might hear something you haven't heard before. And if you've never heard this, well, welcome. We're about to get into some great things. What I'm offering on this particular program will be my book on end times, understanding the end times. And all this is laid out for you in the book. And so in the book, I actually go into more than what I can teach here on the program. So be sure and order you one. And then once you start reading it, you'll probably say, well, I need more to give to my friends. Because with all the a misunderstanding on end times today, it's always been some misunderstanding. Uh, the rapture's not going to come, and uh, it's up to us to change the world around. It's up to us to preach the gospel. That's what's going to change people. It's up to us to lay hands on the sick, fulfill the Great Commission. But when it comes to conquering the whole world, that's going to be Jesus' responsibility. And that's why, again, that he's seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies will be made his footstool. And that will come during the time of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And so again, with end times, it's all laid out for you very, very easily. I, I'd like to take things and make them simple. I'm against a complexity. Uh, if the Bible is there, then it was written for people on, on the street level. I mean, that's the Old Testament and New, Hebrew and Greek were all written on a street language level about like a newspaper, about so that a third or fourth grader could read it. And so for those scholars who try to make everything complicated, well, you're taking something simple and making it complicated. Jesus took what was complicated and made it simple. So that's what I want to do. Turn with me to Daniel chapter nine. We're going to take a look at four verses of scripture, verse 24 through 27. On these four verses of scripture, I call this the center hub of all prophecy. All prophecy revolves around these four verses that were given here in Daniel. And Daniel just simply lays out end times. You understand this, you'll understand the church age, the time we're living in, and what's going to happen at the end of the church age, what the seven uh, years of tribulation, how it fits into the importance of the word of God, all seen through Daniel's eyes. Daniel didn't see the church age coming. What Daniel saw was Jewish time, and so that's what we're going to be talking about here. But we're going to insert in there where the church age fits, because once we come to the work of the cross, we'll see how that it works into Daniel's 70 weeks. So let me describe for you, first of all, before we get into what 70 weeks are, a week in this particular prophecy, and actually in the opening two verses of Daniel chapter 9, Daniel finds the scrolls of Jeremiah. In the scrolls of Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah lays out how long they're going to be in captivity and explains that a year with the Lord here in these passages of scripture is really seven years. Instead of seven days, each day represents a year. So one week represents seven years. And 70 weeks, as Daniel can talk about, represent 490 years. So if you'll understand that, then the thing begins to make sense. But again, it's kind of like, here's the, here's the uh, verses, and the explanation starts back in the opening two verses when Daniel found that back in the books of Jeremiah, the scrolls of Jeremiah. So uh, in essence, what's happening here is Daniel's in captivity, Uh, along with the children of Israel. And they don't know how long they're going to be there until Daniel finds those scrolls of Jeremiah and realizes that Jeremiah is prophesying about what they're going through. And he said they're going to be there for uh, 70 years. And he explains why they're going to be there for 70 years. And so we have to understand that when Daniel went to prayer, 
in this chapter and ask God, would you explain to me why we're here for 70 years? What's going to happen at the end of the 70 years we are here in captivity? And then, uh, you know, how we're going to get out of this? And so, In essence, here's what the Lord told him. What the Lord told him was the reason you're in captivity for 70 years is because for 490 years before this, the people started diverting and turning away from the the commandments of the word of God. And it really started sometime after the death of David. David was the greatest king that Israel ever had. In fact, all kings after him are compared to him. They either did what was right in the sight of the Lord, as did David the king, or David their father, or they did not do as David their father. And so they either had good kingships or bad uh, kingships. So after David died, there was a period of time when, I mean, everything was going pretty good, but the people started slowly turning away without a good leader, without a good pastor in your own life, someone to keep pointing you to the word of God. It's up to you, get it on your own. And not too many people do that. So they begin to slowly turn away. And of course, those who planted crops and stuff were looking at profits and seeing how much profits they could make. And they begin to realize this thing where I have to let the land rest every seven years. If I just kept on planting, I could keep on doing that and and never understanding why God asked them for the sabbatical year. Every seventh year, let the land rest. And it was fine to do it this way. They could divide up into plots. And then simply every seven years, this plot doesn't get planted on this. Next year, this one doesn't. And rotate through all seven different plots. And that way you can still accomplish it because God never asked him to take the whole thing and just not do anything with it for a year or else they'd starve to death. So they begin to do that. And that was fine. That was scriptural. But after a while, they begin to look at that one plot that they weren't using and say, I don't want to use that. And what does it matter? You know, this this one out of seven years where this thing rests. Well, what happened was, is that that's how the land replenishes itself. All the crops, you know, that we have and things like that, if we just leave it alone, that, that ground gets very fertile and you don't have to fertilize it. But we fertilize it today because we don't, we don't let it rest every seven years. So in essence, we're doing what the Bible says. That's when we're, we're replenishing the land. But in those days, God said, no, because there was no such thing as fertilizer, leave the land alone. It will fertilize itself. I remember my secretary one year came to me and she said, would you like to have some tomatoes? And my wife loves tomatoes. I like them, slice them up, put them on a sandwich or something. But my wife just eats them, you know? So anyway, uh, I said, well, yeah, my wife would love them. Anyway, my wife said, when she tasted them, these, I've never tasted tomatoes this good. So I asked my secretary, well, how did you get this? She said, well, she said, we li- we live in a house that's you know, built back, you know, almost a hundred years ago in Tulsa. And there's been owners. So, we, so we're in there renovating it because she said, after a hundred years, this happens, this happens. She says, so my husband decided he was going to tear out the garage floor and re- and have some more concrete poured because this is cracked. And she said, we had it removed. And she said, yeah, we don't know. It could be 70, 80, 90 years that 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 uh, soil's been there. She said, when we removed, that was the blackest soil I'd ever seen. She said, I had not seen anything that black. And it was just, so, she said, and I realized something, we're not going to be able to, to pour the concrete in here for some time. So she said, I planted, she said, I planted, uh, the tomatoes in the, in the, in the, on the floor, what was the floor of the, of the garage? And she said, when they started coming, they came up so quick. She said, they were huge and they were so bright red. And she said, honestly, she said, I don't know if I want to pour a floor in there because this is just so good. That land had been resting for years upon years, but not just one year. It had been resting for 80, 90 years, maybe a hundred years. And they'd been there. And so you see the importance of it here in this particular case, we have these 70 weeks, and each week, again, is going to represent seven years. And what the Lord is simply saying, here's how you got into this. For 490 years, the first thing that happened was you didn't let the land rest. And so listen, sin never starts this big in your life. Sin starts as something small, just like this. And every day you get a little further and further away from it, further and further away from it. And pretty soon you don't even know where you are. That's what happened to Israel. It started out with so something so simple. We're just not going to let the land rest every seven years. That developed into, well, then what about this law? And they begin to question this law, begin to question that law. And by the time that they were about to go into captivity, Israel had forgotten all about God, were worshiping idols, even offering their children as sacrifices, burnt offerings to Molech. They were having on the, the groves of the city, on the high places of the city and around Jerusalem, they were having orgies all in the name of Dagon and all the, and the names of other gods around them and the gods of the, of the Canaanites that were around them and those who had not been killed that back in the time when they came in to, to possess the land, they begin to go after these. And so we have Baal worship, 
all these things and idolatry and, and homosexuality and burning babies, all these things. And God kept imploring with them and pleading with them. The ministry of Isaiah, the ministry of Jeremiah was pleading with the people to come back to God because if they didn't, this was going to happen. And what was happening to them right now as Daniel was in captivity was prophesied it was going to happen, that the king of this area would come and take them over and take them back to Babylon. And the king would do this and would kill many of the Jews, tear down the temple. All this was going to happen and it happened. But by the time they got there and they had no uh, scrolls of the prophets, these people didn't know how long they were going to be there. And the Lord simply said this. Here's the whole point of it. You didn't let the land rest for seven, every seven years. And you didn't do this for 490 years. You know how much time you owe back to the land? 70 years. So for 70 years, this land is going to sit here and not be used by anybody The Bedouins tried to come there and settle there and nothing would grow, nothing would prosper. Other people tried and the whole thing turned into a dust bowl. And by the time the children of Israel got out after 70 years of captivity and came back, we find those books where they came back to build them. And so in doing so, when they came to build the city, they realized, man, we got our work cut out for them. And oh, there was all kinds of problems when they came back. And yet God was with them to help them bring back the city and to rebuild it. And so in essence, here's why it is. And so in Daniel chapter nine, Daniel now realizes we're going to be here for 70 years. But Lord, I want to know what's going to happen after the 70 years are over. Well, you ever heard that verse of scripture in the New Testament that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think? Well, that's what happened in this prayer. He prayed for an answer and he got such a huge answer to this. God actually didn't show him what's going to happen when you get out of here. He showed him what was going to happen for 490 more years. You had 490 90 years where you screwed it up really bad. And once you get out of the 70 years that's in here for paying back the land for not resting every seventh year, he said, now he said, I'm going to give you 490 years where this one ended in disaster. This next 70 weeks are going to end up in great uh, production. And God's going to come back with Jesus and we're going to have the millennial reign of Jesus. These 490 years led to captivity. The next 490 years after that are going to lead to the coming millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. So turn with me to Daniel chapter nine. We're going to take a look at verses 24 through 27. And we'll really start getting into this after the break. But here's the point. I simply want to point out to you, Daniel, in praying to the Lord, actually interceded with the Lord and prayed for his nation, prayed for what was going to happen, and God revealed it to him. Daniel's whole thing was, I'm a prophet to this nation. Uh, God has kept me during the time we've come into into captivity here in Babylon. I wasn't taken and destroyed. They threw me in the lion's den and that didn't work. And they've done other things to me. And now he says, I'm here and and God's preserving me through the whole thing. I want to know why. What's going to happen to our nation? And we'll get into that when we come back. In the meantime, I want to speak to you and just tell I'd like for you to become a partner with me in this ministry. And if you'd like to do that, go to my website, bobbyandian.com. Some you already know in your heart you're supposed to. Others are wrestling with it. And some you've just opened up to the Lord even recently. And you just want to become a partner with me. Well, I want you to become a partner with me too in prayer and also financial giving once a month. So go to my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find a place on there where you can become a partner with me. Thank you ahead of time. I'll see you right after the break. Understanding the end times, one of the most incredible and fascinating doctrines in the Word of God, will bring us comfort for the days in which we live. The Bible says we are to encourage and exhort one another with the knowledge of Jesus returning for His saints. In Understanding the End Times, Pastor Bob Yandian provides a thorough and exciting study to give you more revelation of these times in which we live. Topics include the Seven Dispensations the dispensation of the mystery, the rapture of the church, the judgment seat of Christ, Daniel's 70 weeks, the temple discourse, the tribulation, the second coming, the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. To order Understanding the End Times, visit bobyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines of the Christian faith are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, 
reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24 through verse 27, again, four verses which make up the center hub of all prophecy. And just about every form of prophecy can somehow be built around this because what God uh, did for Daniel, Daniel simply prayed and said, Lord, let me know what's going to come when we get out of here. And God simply said this, well, let me say this. If it took you 490 years to get into this mess, now that you come out of it, it's going to be 490 years that God's going to use to get you completely out and bring back the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So 490 years, let's take a look at it here. It's labeled as 70 weeks. In verse 24, it says, 70 weeks are determined on your people and on your holy city. The word for determined is the Hebrew word shafak, and it means to cut out. And so God simply says, here's time in front of me. It's all laid out this way. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut out 490 years. Once I have the 490 years, I'm gonna divide it. I'm gonna cut uh, through it. And the first thing that will happen is will be seven weeks. And then after seven weeks will be 62 weeks. And then the last one will be one. So God made two more cuts in it. He said, here's what's going to happen. We have 490 years or 70 weeks. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut out the first seven weeks. And I'm going to cut out the next 62 weeks. And then we'll have one at the end. So these 70 weeks are, ter- are actually laid out this way. Seven plus 62 plus one. And so 70 weeks are cut out pair of scissors. We just took time and we just cut and removed 490 years and I'm cutting it into sections. 70 weeks are determined on your people and your holy city. Notice this. It doesn't say America. It doesn't say Tulsa. It doesn't say Dallas. It doesn't say Los Angeles. It says 70 weeks are determined on your people and your holy city. To understand prophecy, you have to know this, that prophecy revolves around Israel and the city of Jerusalem. That's it. Israel and the city of Jerusalem. The Jewish nation and the capital of it where Jesus Christ will rule forever. So if this is where all Bible prophecy revolves around, guess what Satan's number one issue is? Israel and the city of Jerusalem. He's out to destroy the Jewish nation, which he tried to in World War II with the Third Reich. He's tried throughout history to destroy the Jewish nation. It has not happened. He's gone after Jerusalem. He's occupied it. It's been divided up, but still going to be the place where Jesus Christ will rule and reign from, the place where he pre- from, the place where he was crucified. All this happened in this holy city of Jerusalem. And what he's simply saying is that that, that's what we're looking at. We're going to come back to this. So the center hub of all prophecy, as far as the nations are concerned, are not the United States of America. We are not the leading nation the world's going to look to. No, what the world's going to keep looking to is Israel and the city of Jerusalem. You want to know what's happening in Bible prophecy today? Well, you can look at some of the players around the world of what the Bible talks about, Russia and China, and you can look at the Middle East nations and all those other ones and all that, try to figure out where the United States fits into all that. But the whole point of it comes back to this. Jesus is not going to rule from Rome. He's not going to rule from London. He's not going to rule from Washington, D.C. He's going to rule from Jerusalem. And this is what Satan is after. His major point to come after has always been the Messiah, first of all, and he tried his best to end up killing Messiah. But in the days when uh, when Moses was here and the children were being born and Pharaoh tried to kill all the children, again, Moses survived in the days of Jesus. Whenever the, uh, the king Herod tried the same thing and kill all the children two years and under, Jesus survived. It's always been that, that God does something, Satan opposes it, God wins. In this one, the same thing is true. So he says again that 70 weeks or 490 years are cut out of time 
on the Jewish nation and the city of Jerusalem to do this, to finish the transgression, make an end of all sins, make reconciliation for iniquity, usher in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy, which is Jesus Christ. And actually the Hebrew says, not only to anoint Jesus, but to anoint the holy of holies, to cleanse that place and cleanse it all out. And he's going to literally, he's going to bring in at the end of 490 years, he's going to usher in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. He says, at the end of the 490 years, we're going to finish transgression, make an end of sins. We're going to make reconciliation for iniquity. We're going to usher in everlasting righteousness, seal up all the vision and prophecy and anoint Jesus Christ as the ruler of the world. You say, well, 490 years has passed. Well, that's where we're going to break this thing up. Because notice again, as I told you, it's going to be cut into sections. So verse 25 says this, know therefore and understand. Listen, if Daniel could know and understand, and it's written not for Daniel, but for all those afterwards, then listen, hang on to this. You might as well tell yourself, Bob can know and understand. Bill can know and understand. Mary can know and understand. I mean, whatever, whoever you are, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street will be built again, the wall, even in troublous times. So what this is saying is, that the children of Israel are going to come out of here, but these 70 weeks are not going to start until the commandment is given. And this was given by King Artaxerxes. All right. And it's found in the Old Testament where this commandment was given. And at that time period, whenever that command was given, that's when this clock started. I like to think of it this way. God has a stopwatch in this hand. And whenever the decree was given by King Artaxerxes, after the children of Israel came out of captivity, they wanted to build their temple. They wanted to start reconstruction because when they came back, it was a wilderness. I mean, there was, you know, dust everywhere and, and uh, tumbleweeds and all these things coming through. Nothing would grow there. But when the children of Israel got back, they were the blessing that made the ground blessed. The people of God actually cleansed the ground that God had prepared. And Israel came back and Jerusalem came back and they built the temple again, but they couldn't do it without permission. They didn't have a king. They didn't have a leader. And so King Artaxerxes gave the command to do this and to rebuild the city. And they could do that. Once that thing started, God reached over and picked up a stopwatch and the 490 years began. He hit that stopwatch. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's an old fashioned thing on your, let's just say God picked up his I, his iPhone and touched it. And all of a sudden they started ticking down. Okay. And God did that. And here's the point. The moment that happened, this happened and the 490 years began. And says, know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment, the king Artaxerxes made to restore and build Jerusalem until the time that Messiah, the prince will come, will be divided into two sections, seven weeks and then 62 weeks. So it took 69 weeks for this to happen. The seven weeks are seven years, the 420 some odd year, 430 some odd years after that, the 62 weeks bring us to a total time period of 483 years. So from, it took 483 years for all this to come to pass. First of all, the first segment of this, he said, will be seven weeks. Seven weeks, which is 49 years. That's how long it took to rebuild the city, rebuild the sanctuary, rebuild the temple. And after that, they entered into the second time period of 62 weeks. Understand this. When the children of Israel got out of captivity, here's one vow they made to God. We will never, ever worship idols again. And they did not. But the sad part was by the time that Jesus came along, they had turned the law into an idol. They were not worshiping the Lord. They were worshiping the law. And the law became their, their savior. And the law was never designed to save. The law was designed for two things. Number one, to teach them they are a sinner. And number two, that they need a savior. Because the law is divided into two sections. It's the law and the sacrifices. The law was given to show you God's standard and that you can't keep it. So the first thing the law did was point to you and said, you're a sinner. Every time you try, you fail. You keep this one, but you break that one. And if you break one, you've broken all of it. And you realize the futility of you trying to keep the law. But number two is the sacrifices. The law and the sacrifices. And the sacrifices showed you the answer because every sacrifice pointed to Jesus. So the purpose of the law and the sacrifices was this. Paul said, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But after we came to Christ, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. The law's purpose was to bring them to salvation, 
to through Jesus. In other words, it couldn't say, but could point to the Savior. And it can, everything you read about in there said, you're bad, Jesus is good. You're bad, Jesus can save you. You're unrighteous, Jesus is righteous. And so through the sacrifices, the cross was taught and him taking on our sins. And they understood that so they could become born again, or we would call it born again. They became a believer in the Lord and it was accounted to them for righteousness. Notice what it says again in verse 25. Know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, that's when Jesus Christ will come and go to the cross, will be two periods, seven weeks plus 62 weeks. The seven weeks rebuilt this wall, the city, the streets, all that, as the Bible says, you're in troublous times. But the next thing that happened was, it says then begins a time period of 62 weeks. During those 62 weeks, 483 years total, the seven plus the 62 is 483 years. What happened was that second part was that um, Israel reached its golden years. They didn't worship idols. It was a wonderful time period in there. Israel became the banking nation of the world. Deuteronomy 28, uh, the blessings of that chapter came to pass. They were blessed coming in, blessed going out the head, not the tail. They literally became the wealthiest nation on the face of the earth. Nations came to them for borrowing. They became the banking nation, as I have said. Israel became, I mean, it was the greatest nation on the face of the earth, probably the closest to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ that we find in the word of God. But here's the point. By the time, again, those 483 years were coming to an end, they had turned against God. They had made the religion out of the law. They weren't worshiping idols, but in essence, like I said, the law became their idol and they worshiped it. And by the time that Jesus came along, they were so steeped in that they couldn't even recognize Jesus when he came. Let me tell you what happened. At the end of 483 years to the day, Jesus went to the cross and fulfilled this. Notice again, it says here in verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince will be two time periods, seven weeks, then 62 weeks. This brings us to 69 weeks. These two added together are 69 weeks. And at the end of the 69th week, I mean to the day, Jesus went to the cross. Notice what happens during the first part of it. The seven weeks, the street will be built again, the wall even in troublous times, that after the 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that will come, and right there at that time, the people of the prince is the, is the nation that will be under Antichrist in the time of the tribulation, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. After the 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off. Jesus went to the cross at the end of Daniel's 69th week. But notice this, not for himself. Himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses. He bore our sins. But he didn't die for himself. He died for us. And this is what happened. So he's simply saying Messiah will come at the end of the 69th week. And then during the 70th week, this will be brought out in verse 27, that Antichrist will come. He is the leader of the prince of, uh, he's the prince, the leader of the people that will come against the people of God and that will be Rome. And he's simply saying right here at the end of the 69th week, Jesus Christ will die for our sins. But that very last week will be the time of the tribulation. So what happens between Daniel 69th and Daniel 70th week? We have the church age. God simply took those uh, 70 weeks, 490 years and divided up this way, seven weeks plus 62 weeks. And then at the end of the 62 weeks, he simply took those weeks and separated them. And for 2,000 years, we've had the church age between Daniel's 69th week and Daniel's 70th week. And when the church is gone, the world will return back to Jewish time for seven more years. We'll get into it tomorrow. We'll take up from here. And then we'll start getting to Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. We'll see you. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. Join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.